Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Blackwell Epiphany. It's your boy Cargo Gaming, and you know how we do things around here. Let's see, uh, let's follow Peter to Greenwood Cemetery. Um, excuse me. Hey, look, I really want to be left alone right now. Sorry. Hmm, okay. This tombstone is faded and hard. Hey, Peter? Oh, hey, look, I really- Sure. Okay. Well, one thing we haven't done yet is, uh... Let's look up Maggie's name and... Connor's. With Palmer here. Officer Palmer? Yeah, yeah. What can I do for you? Do you have any information on a Maggie Fielding? Let me check. Maggie Fielding. Yeah, she was picked up in a raid not too long ago. A raid? A drug den in Chelsea. Some dump called the Carth House. I know it. Huh. Of course you do. Anything else? Just that she and about a dozen others were sent to the hospital for a detox. They were processed and let go. That's it? That's it. How about his, uh, how about her father? Is there anything in the system about a Connor Fielding? He died about 20 years ago. Let's see. Our records from back then are a bit spotty, but can't hurt to check. No, nothing comes up, but it's a very common name. Is there anything specific you can tell me about him? He was in the army. Oh, then there might be something in the Veterans Association records. Aren't those public? Not everything. But fortunately for you, I can access everything. Okay. Archived records. Connor Fielding. Aw, oh, seriously? What's wrong? Idiots. They had no idea how to archive data back then. I can only look them up by service number. You don't know it, do you? I don't. Sorry. Well, once you know it, let me know. Well, shit, how am I supposed to find that out? Maybe Maggie knows. Well, I better go. Thanks for the help. Or maybe sure. Peter knows. Try Maggie first. Ugh. Oh, sure. Can you tell me he died of- Is there anything else- I haven't said here, I suppose if I want to get help- Tell me- Uh-uh. Bro, -uh. what the fuck am I supposed to do, dude? You said- One see Peter. Well, sure. I'm a bit stumped here. Connor Fielding is the- Connor Fielding is- Does it say here? I talk with the dead. He's definitely- How do we find out about his service number? Um... Hey, look- Sorry. Hmm... Maybe at the gym? It says mi- It's a calendar. Nothing that I can see. That picture frame fell off the wall. Nobody's picked it up yet. Let's be the first. There we go. Nobody can say I don't do anything nice. Let's take a look at it. There you go. Am I supposed to fucking memorize that? I put it back on the wall. I hope we got it. Wait. I hope you memorized it, fam, because I sure as hell didn't. Officer Paul. Yeah. I found Connor's service number. It's 070-234-541. That should Impressive. be all I need. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Connor Fielding. Served in Vietnam from 1966 till 1969. Honorably discharged. Moved with his family to New York a few years later. Huh. That's interesting. 
What? It says here that the police were called to his apartment several times. Reports of raised voices. Possible domestic abuse. No charges were pressed, which is why it wasn't in our police records. But it's in the military database? Or it gets around. Someone must have noted it in his VA file. Doesn't say much else. Well, I'd better go. Thanks for the help. Sure. Let's use this information on Maggie. Oh, coming. Oh, sure, come on in. I learned a bit about your father. You did? The police were called several times to his house. No charges were made. It's not hard to read between the lines. Huh. Well, I suppose you know everything now. I don't, but I'm trying to. Why? Why do you care so much? What does my father beating the crap out of my mother have to do with how Peter died? There's something bigger going on. That doesn't matter. I can't take on anybody else's problems. I'm barely dealing with my own. I've been trying to forget this crap my whole life, and now I have a chance. I'm not going back to that. I'm sorry. I know you think you have good reasons, but I really need to be alone right now. Listen. Please. Leave. Damn it. Okay. You have such a way with people. Are you still here? Just leaving. Where are you going? To visit my precious father. Not that it's any of your business. My neighbors are kind of twitchy. You better get out of here before someone calls the cops. Maggie. Huh? Huh. I had a feeling you'd follow me here. I didn't follow you. You got here after I did. You're not gonna leave me alone, are you? You know I try and help you whenever I can. Not until I spill everything. I've never pressured you to talk to me, Maggie. Although God knows maybe I should have. I'm sorry, but it's important. Maybe it's because I'm out of that stuffy apartment. Maybe it's because when I'm here, I know he's really gone. I know. I miss him too. Talking about it. The fifth step. My sponsor said I didn't have to do them in order. Many people don't. I guess now is as good a time as any. I'd like that, Maggie. I really would. So, talk. Tell me about your father. It's not about him. Not really. It's all wrapped up with Peter. It's always Peter. What are you talking about? What did Peter do? What did Peter do? Nothing. Everything. Maggie, what are you talking about? <sighs> he took over my dad's gym, made it successful. I hated him for it. Why? Wait, what? Don't you remember how miserable I was? Drifting from job to job, hating all of them. Running dad's gym was something I was good at. I thought you'd be happy for me. Didn't Peter have lots of jobs he hated before he started working at the gym? Couldn't you be happy for him? Happy? Happy that he took my father's name and made it revered? I don't see the problem here. The people in the neighborhood love that gym. They come by and say what a nice old man Connor Fielding was. And what a shame he died. And how nice that his son took up his legacy. Legacy. A legacy of bruises and hiding in the dark. Bruises? What are you talking about? You always believed her when she said she was clumsy. It was like some horrible after-school special. Maggie, you are not saying what I think you're saying. You never knew, did you, Peter? So wrapped up in yourself. You never saw what he was doing. Why didn't you talk to him? tell me? Mom hid it from both of us. And I was too scared to say anything. In the end, it was just easier to say nothing. And hate you. And now it's too late. For what it's worth, I don't hate you anymore, Peter. But I need to get on with my life. Goodbye, brother. Goodbye? What do you mean, goodbye? Um, sorry. I should go. Maggie, wait! Maggie! I never knew! I swear! I never knew! I believe you, man. I just man. don't understand. I... Huh?
My God. I'm sorry, Peter. I remember. The ladder. It broke. Oh, man. I don't feel so good. Right. We don't have a lot of time. Peter, I need you to grab a hold of this. What the heck is that thing? No time. Just grab. Well, that was close. Did it work? Let's get back and find out. This whole story is incredible. It's all true, I Peter. agree. Can't you feel it? Like something is trying to pull you away. I thought it was just indigestion, but I've never had indigestion in my life. Figures I'd get it when I'm dead. Madeline, have you had time to examine them? I think... yes. Madeline? Yes, apologies. I believe I have all the information I need. Huh? Madeline? Ugh, I really don't feel so good. You this motherfucker! can't be right. Michael? What's going on? Madeline! Apologies, my host. I... Madeline, what just happened? That felt quite pleasant. Madeline? Madeline? Hey! We did this. You, Malone, stay back. You as well, Blackwell. I have absorbed enough energy to burn that precious body of yours to a cinder. Why? Why do this? Have you ever heard of the concept, the journey of the soul? What? It is said that every soul has a predestined fate or destiny, and the goal of every soul is to find it. But it is also said that the joy comes from the journey, not the destination. Have you ever wondered where you would be now without the Grace Group? Without the epiphanies that were pushed into your brains as if by magic? Maybe you would have all found your way, maybe not. But you skipped the journey, went right to the destination. It made your souls happy for certain, but it also made them weak, pliable, controllable by someone like me. And now, if you'll excuse me, I am still very hungry. No! Shit. You. This whole time it was you? Indirectly. I knew these souls existed, I just needed to collect them. I could not collect my host until last, because my existence here was tied to him. As for Fielding and Goffstein, they were sleeping spirits. They needed to be awakened. Something only you could do. So, thank you for that. What do you mean by that? Perhaps that word is not sufficient. Possibly... consume... ingest... absorb. I took their energy as part of my own. Why? What the hell are you doing this for? I pulled you out of the dark! You were free! Why mess that up? Free. You of all souls tell me that I'm free. I am dead. For centuries I have been dead. I was a good spirit guide. I did my duty, and yet did I ever move on? Did I receive any reward? No. I was passed on from host to host, saving spirit after spirit. It became tiresome. Then my last host banished me. I remained there, in the void, alone. Forgotten by the universe. Until you brought me out. Yeah, well, we all make mistakes. But I was still not free. To fully free myself, I needed power, energy. And these souls, these poor, misguided souls, were the nearest source I could find. And what do you need energy for? What on earth could be worth all of this? Allow me to demonstrate. Hey! What the hell are you doing? No way. Ah! Red, you okay? Come on, darling, say something. Interesting. I wondered if I would have to relearn how to breathe or walk, but it all comes quite naturally, like putting on a tailored glove. Madeline. Hello, Malone. Seeing you with these eyes is different. Of course, it might be the spectacles, cumbersome things. I'll show you cumbersome. How about a punch in the face? Malone. There is no need for this hostility. No need? You lied to us from day one! I apologize for the ruse. I admit I have not been completely forthcoming. 
No kidding. Come now, Malone. Nothing has changed. I won't shirk the duty. I have no choice. We will continue to save lost souls. Performing it from this end could be refreshing. Like hell. Like hell. Sadly, you have no choice. I bet I do. I'm gonna fix this. I'm afraid it's too late for that. Red, fight her. Whatever she's doing, fight her. She cannot. If her predecessors could not win against me, then she has no hope. Not with the power I now possess. Predecessors? Shit. What are you talking about? This is not the first time I have attempted this. In the void, I could only reach certain minds. The minds of other bestowers. Other bestowers? You mean... The other Blackwell women. Yes. But I was too weak. And so were they. I could only control their minds for a few minutes before they... broke. Broke? I did not expect that would happen, but some good did come of it. I eventually learned the proper approach, and finally I have succeeded. You're insane. I mean it, Madeline, a stark, raving lunatic. Do you have any idea what you've done? You dare condemn me, little ghost? Allow a few centuries to pass. Wait until you've been left abandoned in the dark. Adrift. Terrified. Then you can pass judgment. But until then, I must get to the business of living. Stay here. We're not done talking. I said stay here! Ah! Hey! Damn, he's getting dragged around. This is nuts! Now cut that out. Do try and keep up. I'm getting her back. One way or another. Strangling the fuck out of her. Come here! Ugh. What? What are you doing? You know, Red and I have a bond. We gotta stick together. Where she goes, I go. You might be wearing Red's body, but you ain't her. There's a line in the snow, and you can't cross it. But Rosa Blackwell, she can cross it just fine. You're... you're hurting me! Good. Good. <gasps> you idiot! Do you have any idea what you just did? Yeah, I just, I just winged it. you, sister. No. No, I will not be trapped in that limbo again. Oh, Tough. yes, you will. You made this mess. Now clean it up. Very well. Just remember, you brought this on yourself. Uh, Red? Red, talk to me. Joey? I... You okay? I... Uh, Careful. I feel... You! Great. What like the a bad penny. Dispatch reported a woman ranting to herself in front of a church. I had a feeling it would be you. Care to explain the dead body around the corner? Corey? That's Officer Palmer. Now, explain. No. Miss Blackwell, I've been patient and cooperative so far. No. Stay where you are. God damn! What are you doing? Was it like this for them? For who? Red? I think... I think it's happening. Huh? Auntie, my grandmother, it's happening. It's like, it's like it's, no, it's too much. Red, stop that. Come on, you're gonna hurt yourself. Jesus, cut it out. Not again, That's not blood. you, not now. Help somebody, anybody. A little more conviction than I that, mate. Is that the bad ending? Gotta... No! No! Huh? Joey? Joey? I... God, I'm tired. Holy shit, what is going on here, man? <sighs> You're lucky. If this had been like a couple more minutes into the future, I would have called an episode. Auntie? What? The last time I saw Auntie alive, she was wasting away in a hospital bed. Gray and gaunt. But now, she looks young. Younger than me, even. Hello, Auntie? 
Is that you? Oh, hey. I saved you a seat. Appreciate you. Where are Where we? Where are we? You asked too many questions. That was my first one. You always did. Sit down, kiddo. We've got nothing but time. Hold it my second. Cigarette? No thanks. Hmm. Beautiful. So... Auntie? Yeah, kiddo? What happened to me? What happened to me? To us? Don't know. Last I remember, my head hurt really bad. I tried to make it stop, but it just got worse. I might have thrown something? You did. I was there. Did I scream? Yes. I I didn't hurt you, did I? I hid in the closet. Ah, good. Smart. Yeah. We were possessed. We were possessed by the spirit called Madeline. She didn't succeed, but we ended up here. Somehow. Oh. That's all you can say? Oh? Does it really matter anymore? I guess not. You look so... young. Well, I take care of myself. No, that's not what I mean. When I last saw you, you were over 50, at least. So I kept on living, huh? You were alive, if that's what you mean. Hmm, hospital bed. Like mom. Yeah. Well, I guess it was my turn. And now, I guess it's yours. I can't stay here. I've missed you. Oh yeah? Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? About Joey. About my family. All of it. You were five years old. You could barely understand how to tie your shoes. And I thought we had more time. But hey, you're here now. And we've got all the time in the world. Is this where you've been all this time? Don't know. Don't much care. The view is nice. I don't have Joey nagging me. Auntie, you don't seem yourself. <laughs> you don't know me at all, kiddo. In this place, I feel more like myself than anywhere I've ever been. Auntie, is my grandmother here? She was, but she faded away. I guess faded. it will happen to me soon. And you. But in the meantime, let's enjoy the view. Huh. Sure is a nice view, isn't it? Yeah. Let's just enjoy it for a while. Let's not I... say we did. Funny. What? I thought I might get up. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. Hmm. Something wrong? No. I had an idea, but it doesn't seem important. I know the feeling. Just kick back. Enjoy the light show. <sighs> it's like they're reading from a playbook. Constrained, drugged, placed under observation. In a week, they'll move you to another ward. Then they'll poke you full of needles, and nod thoughtfully while taking notes. Then they'll move you to a long-term care floor. Keep you drugged, and fed, and washed. And then, I'll watch you turn gray. I'll watch your skin weather and dry. And then, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. It's all my fault. I can't blame the universe, or death, or even you. This one's on me. Maybe I deserve it, but you certainly don't. There's got to be a way to fix this. There has to be. How do we do that? She's still there, physically at least. The padded room might be overkill, but if the drugs ever wear off, better safe than sorry, I guess. This place hasn't changed all that much since the last time I was here. Home sweet home. It's the door to an- Empty. For now, anyway. Hey? Oh. Hello? Middle-aged guy, maybe early 50s? He must have died in that straitjacket. Hey. I mean- Yes. Uh, you hey, okay? Are you okay, pal? I should be okay. But you're not. You should be okay, but you're not? I'm not like them. It should have worked. So, who are you? Everyone. No one. 
So many thoughts. So many. Hmm. I can see why he ended up here. Look, we're gonna be neighbors for a while, so maybe you could tone down the crazy? No, I'm not that. Just the opposite. The folks who run this place might disagree. It's so hard to think. I bet. What exactly should have worked? Everything. Nothing. Maybe. Regret. Maybe. You regret something? You know nothing of regret. I might know a thing or two. Look, forget it. I got my own problems to deal with. So what's to the left? Looks like a duty roster for the orderlies. No point in reading it. I'll become very familiar with the staff here after a few years. Looks like you've accepted your fate. Oh, this guy. Quentin? Dr. Donald Quentin, or as I like to call him, Dr. Quack. Age 34. Height 5 feet 4 inches. Weight 180 pounds. That thing pounds. needs a date with a needle and thread, or a fireplace. Subject, Some kind of solid abstract a police thing. Officer. No idea then what it could be. Herself. When restrained by a team of officers, she reacted so violently that two of them were hospitalized. Another computer doing something incomprehensible. Deemed a danger to herself and others, she was sedated and brought to this facility. It's Subject a tray of medical exhibits stuff, the same bandages, as scalpels, other members forceps. of her family. I don't want Violent to think what they do with them here. In God damn you guys, could you like Four years coordinate? Ago, I advised the subject to submit herself to testing and regular visits. That was four years ago? That guy fight. was Lauren Blackwell's doctor when she was here. Did nothing but plug her full of drugs. I guess it's Red's turn now. <sighs> it's an x-ray of Red's noggin. X-rays of the skull show no abnormalities. Scans of the brain show increased activity in the parietal and occipital lobes. They're exhibiting short but regular bursts of intense energy. These findings remain consistent with what we know of her family history. It's as if she is receiving sensory input from elsewhere and it became too much for her brain to handle. There is so much we do not know. I will continue to observe and report any findings. Oh, I wish. I've been wanting to give that guy a piece of my mind for years. You wanna blow on him? Hey. No reaction. No surprise there. Nothing could get through that fat head of his. <laughs> Let's leave. It's just a file cabinet. Probably been here years. They brought Red in on this thing. Ah, damn it. What's that? The totem is still here. I wonder... Just an old closet? Huh. This letter is dated several years ago. From Donald Quentin, be advised, be advised that no patient is to be placed in Unit 2 until further notice. As you all... What? As you are all aware, that unit was occupied by Mr. Benjiro. Benjiro Hattori until his death last week. The room has been deemed unsafe by hospital, hospital inspectors. Benjiro Hattori, huh? Okay, we have a name. Just a cr Looks like an old... I mean... I'm not just... It's the... <laughs> Interesting! It's gonna be a longer episode, but I can't do it to you guys. If you've been here for this long, you guys deserve more. So let's go. Vortex. Excuse me? What the fuck is that? Do you see that, fam? <sighs> I think it goes without saying it. This more technical crap... I don't know what that is, but it can't be good. Is Whatever that Madeline's that doing? Is, I can't reach it from here. Guy manning the front desk. He wasn't around the last time I was stuck in this place. One of the few things that's changed around here. There's a small keyhole above the button. Hmm. Are we gonna bust on out of here? Somehow. Hey. Yes. 
Hey, I did some research. Kinda. You're Benjiro, aren't you? Ben... Jiro? Yeah. Benjiro Hattori? You were the last guy to occupy this room, so I'm guessing you're him. What do you know of me? You ran those Grace Group meetings. I... yes. That was so long ago. How long has it been? Twenty-five years. Twenty-five years? Have I really spent two decades of my life in this place? Well, two decades of your death. More than that, Benjiro. More than that? You died here. You're haunting the padded room where they locked you up. Yes, I thought as much. You thought as much? You're saying you know you're dead? I suspected, but I couldn't be sure. How could you not How could know? you not know for sure? Well, I've never died before, did I? My people spend so much time avoiding death that we refuse to believe it when it happens. Your people? Yes, I'm part of a society. Some would call us vampires, but not the kind from stories. We extend our own lives by consuming the positive energy from willing subjects. They die, but we live. Hmm. We ran into one of your people last year. Guy named Gavin. He killed a bunch of people. He tried to kill us. He's dead now. I see. He says with a you smile. You must understand, I am not like my colleagues. I never liked hurting people, but I didn't want to die either. So I mm -hmm. made a point of studying the life energy we consumed. I created the Epiphany Experiment. The Epiphany Experiment? I wanted to improve the lives of those I fed upon, not destroy them. Instead of removing positive energy from a subject, I increased it. I enabled them to achieve their heart's hidden desire, to create a surplus of positive energy, and I skimmed off the top. Skimmed off the top. And this worked? Yes, and no. It worked too well. My mind couldn't take the energy. I went a bit mad, ended up committed here, and here I am. Here well, I are. hope you're satisfied. Your experiment ended up killing your subjects. Even worse, their souls. Their souls? You made them weak. Weak enough that they got, well, soul-napped by this spook named Madeline. I see. I did not consider that eventuality, but it does explain much. Eh? Come with me. I must show you something. I hope you're gonna guide me to that vortex. You know what? I'm sorry, but I, do I don't want super long episodes with this one. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna call it an episode right here. And next episode, we're gonna have the finale of this series and this game right here. Until then, this has been your boy Kyogre Gaming. I'm out of here. Love y'all and do says.